odd moment, you know. <laughs> uh, I've got to deal with this matter. And once you uncover that issue, there's a whole line of the other ones, all the way, there's hundreds, thousands of them, and some are much more serious than that. Well, you don't even know what they are, so you, you can't just say I don't agree, you don't, you don't just agree with they are. Um, well, I mean, one of, the, one of the big things that shook me as a Christian when I was at uni studying uh, New Testament, um, I think I knew about that before that actually, but um, was the Gospel of John. Have you noticed about the Gospel, the Gospel of John is a bit different from the other Gospels? Is that... In the Gospel of John, you have a Jesus who is very clearly divine. Before Abraham was, I am. He comes up with statements like, I am the light of the world. That's very strange. I've never heard a Muslim say that one, okay? <laughs> you never heard a Muslim? Uh, you should talk to more Muslims. Um, As in, I, I like, agree that he claims to be divine in John. Absolutely, he does. But let's look at how let's look at how serious it is. I am the light of the world in, Mar in, Mar in John, I should say. Before Abraham was, I am. I am the resurrection of the life. I am this, I am the shepherd, I'm the good shepherd, etc. Et it's all there in John, isn't it? I, and, jo and Jesus talks endlessly about the relationship between the Son and the Father. You know, um, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. Um, and so on. Now, the, there are verses in John which contradict that, but I'm not going to go there. I want to focus on the ones where he claims to divinity of some kind. So Jesus walks around saying, I am the light of the world, yeah? Before Abraham was, I am. This is the Tetragrammaton. You know about that, from Exodus 15. Yeah. The question is, and the scholars have noticed this, if you read the Gospel of Mark and Matthew and Luke, nowhere does Jesus say any of these things. Nowhere does he talk like that. Nowhere does he say any I am statements at all. Why is that? And these are earlier, the dates are chronologically earlier. So Mark's the first, then Matthew and Luke, about 85, 90 AD. John, towards the end of the first century. Well, the, you don't, anyway. Um, we're not even as big as Gorney yet. Um, so the question is, if Luke, for example, the beginning of his gospel in the prologue says, Dear Theophilus, uh, you know, I'm writing an orderly account for you, uh, giving you an account of all the things that happened amongst us. So he's intending to give a full account of the life of Jesus, a, a bios, a biography, yeah? Why did Luke, did he not know that Jesus went around making these statements? Or if he did, did he deliberately leave them out? What, what's your theory? As in why he specifically doesn't say I am. Well, we've got all these I am statements in John. In John. Jesus went around publicly saying this, according to John, the last of the Gospels. Matthew, Matthew never bothered to mention it. Luke never bothered to mention it. Mark never bothered to mention it. He's never mentioned in Acts either, but we'll leave that one side. Why is it that no one in other Gospels knows that Jesus spoke in these amazing, extraordinary claims at all, apart from one Gospel, the last to be written? Well, I think he claims Lord's ambiguous. Curios in Greek can mean anything from a teacher, as it still is in modern teacher, it can still mean that, all the way to, to so Yahweh. Word, yeah. Curios is the word in the New Testament, meaning Lord. Okay. Yeah. It can mean teacher. It normally does mean teacher. It doesn't it doesn't mean God. I, I, I there's a spectrum of meaning. Greek, so okay, well, there's some free information for you. So if I was to call you good teacher in Greek, it would be Good kurios, good, good teacher. Well. It does, but the context will tell you what's meant. One can't assume if one Jew is talking to another Jew in downtown Palestine, that one is telling the other guy that he is the Lord God. That's not an assumption one would normally make. Okay, It would normally be that he's addressing him as teacher. So Lord does not mean God. It can do, but it doesn't necessarily. And the context we're talking about almost certainly doesn't mean that. It means teacher. Or sir, can you even just well, sir? In that case, um, I don't know how he can claim to be God. So, coming back to the I am statements, which are unique in only one place in the entire Bible, in the New Testament, I mean, only found in John. Uh, I see what you mean. Um, Why would Luke leave this stuff out? If Jesus went around publicly saying this, and it would be widely known, Luke boasts that he's, he's, he's doing the, he's, he's surveying all these things in the beginning, doesn't mention it, and ditto Matthew, okay. ditto Luke. Okay. Yes. Is that it? Yes. 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 Yes
Okay, so isn't, assuming that I can't uh, find a verse that says Lord, I have to use I am in the first of gospel. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, I think, um, yeah, I don't know. It just seems a bit of a weak argument. I don't really like it. Well, what's weak about the argument? I haven't even made an argument. It's, it's, a, it's a question, I've not made an argument yet. I, I'm observing, I'm observing the Gospels and the, the, the very different way Jesus portrayed in John than he is from the synoptics, Matthew, Mark and Luke. So I'm asking a question, I'm not making an argument yet, there is an argument, but I'm not come to that. I'm just asking you, given we agree on the facts, how come none of the early Gospels knew that Jesus went around talking like this, if he indeed went around talking like this? Does this strike you as particularly strange and historically odd? That if Jesus had said these most remarkable things, made these claims, that no one seems to have known about it. Okay. Do you want to know what your scholars are saying? What are they saying? Okay. They have concluded, uh, for a number of reasons, not just for the reason to do with this issue, that the fourth gospel is a highly interpreted meditation on the significance of the life of Jesus for the author. It's not history. G so, the argument is this. I'm sure. So the argument is this. The author of the fourth gospel believed Jesus was the light of the world, clearly. So he puts those words on the lips of Jesus and has Jesus say, I am the light of the world. He believes that Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. I am the way. So he puts those words on the lips of Jesus. These are not historical words of Jesus, they are theological words put on the, his lips by faith, the Christian faith that believes that is, that is the truth about Jesus. Okay. Sorry, I, I probably need to go. But of I course. But, but these ideas are not coming from atheists, they're coming from Christian scholars, a number of which I mean, I've read. Yeah, I, they're coming from your I own scholars. Um, but you see, I from a Muslim... It's not the strongest to me. Okay, but you've got to, you see, I think the responsibility that, I, I mean, I'm not, I don't really mean a moral responsibility now, but in principle, the responsibility of someone in your position would be to come up with an explanation, not to simply say, I'm not convinced. Because the problem I mean, is there. But this is not an error. It's not, no one's made a mistake here. It's a deliberate portrayal of Jesus according to faith as it existed towards the end of the first century. That's not a mistake, that's deliberate. Okay, right, well as in like, if, if we're using the, if we're viewing the Bible's eyewitness testimony, the New Testament at least, and then trying to call it to have a different perspective, and that's not true. I guess we're living for states on the right way, but a lie or something. Like See, I, I've heard Christian scholars say, very eminent professors, uh, again, ordained clergymen say, just because, and they, they would agree that John is not giving us the historical Jesus, but they would say, and this is where you, up to you what you believe, or I believe, that it's still true what the Gospel of John says. It is true that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. It is true that where, you know, he is all those I am statements. It's still true that it's not historical. Now, I have a problem with that. Uh, you probably do as an evangelical. I can imagine, because I had a problem with that, because it means you're believing in a, a make-believe story and believing it to be true, in not just in a literary sense or a theological sense, but in a historical sense. Because that means the real historical Jesus didn't say these things. And this, what, the Jesus that's left is very much like the Islamic Jesus, a Jesus who is sent by God, a prophet, a messenger, and so on. And, that, and, and that's where it leads, ultimately, if one is open to uh, that, uh, to the only religion on earth, that gives us that understanding of the historical Jesus that matches historical research. I think that's difficult to believe. But... Okay. Again, you, you say this repeatedly without giving reasons why. Well, because the Quran <laughs> came many years later. Did it? What do Muslims believe about the Quran? They believe it's the speech of God. Okay. Do you think Jesus, God was, existed in time before the seventh century? Do you think he's a creature in the universe? Who's, yeah, okay, I get what you're saying. He's a timeless being. Um, there's no before, now, or present with Jesus, with God, I mean. So, the revelation was received by Muhammad in the, in the time of his life, of course, but the revelation itself is not created by it's strange the man. That he would seem to like correct the revelation. Why is that strange? Isn't that something you'd expect from God? But who corrupted it? 
Muslims. No, no, no. Who came up with the idea of the gospel of Je about gospel about Jesus being that you that Jesus died for the sins of the world? It's not something Jesus taught. It was something that Paul taught, and Paul never met Jesus. I, I don't want to get into the debate. But, okay. Um, anyway. Um, so these are some of the questions that, um, I mean, Bob the Builder, you know, but he's not always the most easy person to talk to, <clears throat> whereas you're obviously very polite and uh, easy to talk to. So um, I should keep, keep an open mind about Islam, keep an open mind about the Islamic understanding of Jesus. I think it, I find it very compelling because it's also the historical Jesus, uh, and that's where even Christian scholarship leads in that direction, in terms of who Jesus was, what he taught, for example. Um, and it will leave away from Christianity, because, uh, as we understand it now, because that worships Jesus rather than God. And, and Muslims are very, very keen on pointing out we should worship God alone, without partners, without associates. I can agree with that point, yeah. But Christians don't do that because they worship God and Jesus. I think they're both God. Yeah. Well, then you believe in two gods. I don't want to get into Trinity. <laughs> <laughs> or three, then. Fine. Okay. Well, um, yeah, I, I do have, like... Uh, well, I find there's issues with the Quran in terms of its preservation as well, like the Arabs. Um, you have issues with the preservation of the Quran. Interesting. Yeah, well, that and like the um, what, like what the issues? Bible. Really? Just, um, well, what's our oldest New Testament manuscript that we have in the world currently? It's the Codex Sinaiticus, which is literally a mile in that direction, the British Library. Yeah. Do you know where it's dated from? Mid fourth century. Yeah. As the earliest Bible in the world, mid fourth century. It's 400 years after the birth of Jesus. What's the earliest, in terms of manuscripts? Okay, so how, how, I don't want to go into like manuscripts. Okay, I thought that was, you, you, well, you said that was an issue. It is an issue for me. Oh, so that's. Okay. It's in more of like. Um, we have, we have yeah. manuscripts going back to the time of the Prophet, that's what I'm trying to say. Now. I mean, I think that's not a bad comparison, so we see it came really? years later, but that's fine. Um, I'll concede that. It's more how uh, they had to burn all the lives. If man had to standardise it and they were killing each other over it, to me that just seems like there's really an issue. But so you've looked at, you, you don't want to get into that. Well, there, uh, there's I'll, a, I'll response, but I, I think it's a misunderstanding of, of what happened okay. uh, in terms of the recitation of the Quran and yeah. wanting uh, a, a codex, a, a written Quran as, as like a template and it was copied and sent out around the Islamic Empire. Uh, as the Quran was recited throughout the empire, it was losing, for some people, it was beginning to be you know, there were dodgy dodginess was entering into it. We we did to retain the integrity and reliability of the Quran, and so the original companions of the Prophet formed a committee, not just Uthman, and compiled the the standard written version. Um, and any other copies were told to be destroyed. So it, it preserved the integrity of, and it's now widely accepted by most scholars that the Quran we have today oh, David. is. How are you? I'm good. good Hi. Ball. How you doing? I was just about to do this. Oh, are you going out already? Oh, I was about to do you want to ask me? No, nothing. You just, you've been here for a while or just, just came? Just a couple of minutes. Uh, I've been here for like an hour. Okay. You had enough of the park? Uh, I have to go to church. Oh! I'm already well, but I can't come around here. Oh, go, go ahead then. That's my fault for detaining no, him. No, come, on, come on, Paul. <laughs> hey, you can take over for me, David. I'll uh, take over for you. <laughs> uh, what's happening? Anyway, um, yeah, I'm not sure we can just pass on the job. But um, so I think there's a misunderstanding about the actual story. Uh, but as I say, the preservation of the Quran is now accepted by most Western scholars. The Quran we have today is the same Quran we have at the time of the Prophet. Well, I, have you have you seen the Birmingham Codex at the Birmingham University? I've spoken to Professor Thomas, who's the head of department there, who's the expert on this. I've interviewed him on my channel. He disagrees with you. How's your Arabic, by the way? How, is, how, how can you tell what he's saying is true? So, um, <laughs> see, this is always a problem, right? You can make these claims. No, I'm not and making these claims. Challenge, then it's, okay. it's, it's no, I'm saying uh, I've spoken to Professor Thomas uh, is at the University okay, of Birmingham. One person. Okay. Yeah, just one so person. Then Stephen Shoemaker doesn't agree with you. Okay. Right. Okay, can I talk to this? And, and, and okay. then what? Right. So when, when, uh, when we uh, I don't sh Shoemaker, so, so Shoemaker is 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 someone else. I'm just talking about the person. Right. But why can, can you I believe that just because one person says something? He's not just one person. Okay. Who else says that the Birmingham Codex proves that the Quran is exactly the same as when it was written down by either the vast majority, the vast majority of scholars, the vast majority of Western scholars? I don't do. believe 